this evening, uh, I've titled my, uh, my little talk this evening, Lessons I Learned from Three Samaritans. And I also got word that if you speak from up here, it counts as a sermon. Is that right? Steve says yes. Okay. Um, so these three Samaritans, actually Steve spoke about one during his Bible study and J.D. Uh, in, in his sermon also mentioned one of the other ones that I was going to use. So I'm just going to do the, the remaining one. I'm kidding. I'll do them all. So beginning in uh, these three Samaritans, by the way, are uh, the Good Samaritan of Luke 10, the leper of Luke 17, you remember the 10 lepers, and the woman of Samaria, which we sometimes refer to as the woman at the well. So if you will turn with me to Luke 10.25, we'll start there. And this is uh, a parable. The others are true stories. This one is a parable that Jesus uh, posed when he was asked a question by one of the uh, lawyers that was uh, around him. Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And that's an important question. If somebody asked you that question, you'd have a slightly different answer because uh, we have the word with us now. So beginning in verse 27, uh, well, first of all, Jesus answered with a question as he uh, often did, and he asked them, what is written in the law? And I, I think that's something we can do also when if we're asked that question by somebody, you know, we go to to the written word. And he also asked them, what is your reading of it? So in verse, beginning verse 27, so he answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And that actually comes from uh, Levit Leviticus 19.18. And he said to him, you have answered rightly. Do this and you will live. Of course, the lawyer wasn't done with that answer. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? So Jesus uh, proceeded to tell this parable and posed another question to the man, uh, providing him the answer in, in the story. So starting in uh, verse 30, then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? And he said, he who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. So from this Samaritan, I learn who my neighbor is, uh, to love my neighbor and to show mercy. The second Samaritan is also from Luke, and it's one of the ten lepers. And beginning in Luke 17, 11. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him 10 men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Uh, two things that, kind of on a side note, that's, 
that stuck out for me in this story was one that, uh, number one, that Jesus didn't say, go show yourselves to the priest and then come back and give thanks. But this one Samaritan did so because he was so grateful for the healing that he received that he came back to give glory to God. And the second thing is that he, I was just thinking, it says that he fell down at the feet of God. You know, he, here he is standing before Jesus. So he's, he's actually giving thanks right before God there. Just a, a thought that I had there. So what I learned from the Samaritan leper was to give God thanks for what he does for us, to give him glory, and to have faith. He told him, your faith has made you well. So the third Samaritan is the Samaritan woman that, G, that uh, J.D. covered in his uh, sermon. And this comes from John 4. And we can, in, uh, we can begin in John 4, verse 5. Actually, I'm going to start in verse 6. Now, Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. J.D. covered that. Uh, Sunday with his uh, sermon how they didn't associate with one another Jesus answered and said to her if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you give me a drink you would have asked him and he would have given you living water the woman said to him sir you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep where then do you get that living water of course she was not understanding the spiritual ramifications of what Jesus told her. <clears throat> so she, uh, he says, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, go call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have well said, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands and the one whom you now have is not your husband. In that you spoke truly. The woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshiped on this mountain and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in, Jer in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. At this point, his disciples came and they marveled that he talked with a woman, yet no one said, what do you seek or where, or why are you talking with her? The woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city and said to the men, come see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came to, <clears throat> came to him. In the meantime, his disciples urged them, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat, of which you do not know. Therefore the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him anything to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me, and to finish his work. Do not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. And he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life, 
that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this the saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labors. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his own word. Then they said to the woman, now we believe, not because of what you said, for we ourselves have heard him, and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. So what I learned from the Samaritan woman was to desire truth. You know, Jesus said that I am the truth, the way and the life. So, and to ask questions about the truth and to look for the answers. And when you find the answer, to believe it and share it with others so that they also will believe uh, and come to know God. And be knowledgeable in your dealings with God. Uh, we see that the Samaritan woman knew from the scriptures that there, that there was a Messiah and that he was coming. And she knew that there was a significance to the place where she was when she said that her forefathers worshipped on that mountain. Of course, Jesus then corrected her and told her that what was coming uh, where they wouldn't be worshipping there anymore. So, and these Samaritans realized when they met and spoke with Jesus that he spoke the truth and they believed it. So we now have the truth in, in written form uh, in the form of the Bible. And we too can know the truth by hearing uh, or reading it for ourselves, believing it, repenting of our sins and confessing that Jesus is the Son of God and finally be baptized for the forgiveness of those sins. Um, what I noticed was the way the Samaritan men told her, you know, they believed when she told them what had happened to her. But then after they spoke with Jesus, they say, we believe now because we, we actually spoke to him, not just because of what you told us. So that question that was asked in the first uh, story, what must I do to have eternal life, is what all Christians uh, long for, and we know the answer. But if you're not a Christian, this is what you must do to inherit eternal life, and that is to, to hear, to believe, to confess, to repent, be baptized for the remission of sins. So if there's anyone here that requires the, the prayers of, uh, of the church for whatever uh, you might be going through. We're here to help you, and we are also here uh, prepared to baptize anyone that feels that they are ready for this uh, next step. In a moment, we'll be singing song number 498, so let us stand and sing the song that has been chosen, invitation, J.D. 